Hey, this is James from the Photography Insider Info blog. So a few months ago, I wrote an article about the advantages and disadvantages of a Penta Prism versus a Penta Mirror. And um, several people contacted me via the Contact Us page on the blog and just asked for a little bit more information. So I thought I'd rewrite the article and include answers to their questions. Um, but I thought it might help um, just help you a little by showing you a pentaprism and a pentamirror and actually show you the physical objects. So in front of you here I've got two old film cameras. Um, one has a pentaprism, the other has a pentamirror and I'm actually going to take them apart and show you the bits. So I'm going to put this one to the side for a moment. Um, I should of course say to you that if you take a camera apart you're almost certainly going to break it so I would not recommend you do it. Um, you don't want to buy a new camera just to satisfy your own curiosity about uh, what's inside. Um, but let me um, let me do it for you so you can see. Now in here, um, let's say this is an old film camera, you've got the lens mount here, the light would pass through the lens uh, onto the reflex mirror inside here. So there you actually have the reflex mirror. That's what makes a single lens reflex. Um, it gives it its name that you have this reflex mirror, this mirror that can move up and down. And normally, in its normal position, the light from the lens reflects onto the mirror uh, or reflects off the mirror up here into the roof of the camera where there is a focusing screen, a ground, ground, ground glass screen um, onto which the image is focused. And when you press the shutter release, the mirror sw swings out of the way and allows the light to fall onto, if it's a digital camera, the light sensor, or a film camera, the, the film. Um, and obviously there's the shutter in the way, which actually controls how much time the light is allowed to fall on the sensor for. Um, but the, the mirror moves out of the way and allows that process to happen. Um, but normally you want to be able to look through the lens, you want to be able to see the image. And so the viewfinder here um, is m mounted in the same direction of the lens so that you face forward, it feels natural. Um, and you need some way by which the uh, image from the lens hits your eye in a natural way so that it's the right way up and down and left to right. And that is the job of the pentaprism or the pentamirror. It flips the image up the correct way around so that you can actually focus and see uh, properly so it helps with panning if everything's going in the right direction. So as I said, I'm going to take this apart now. Please do not do this to your own cameras. You will break them. And if I just lift that top off there and expose the electronics inside, you can see um, the various controls there, uh, electronic chips, computer chips, which control the operation of the camera. And I've already taken this apart, so I can flip that out of the way, that circuit board out of the way. And you're now looking at the pentaprism doesn't look very much really, it's a piece of black, um, well at the moment you can't really tell what it is but it's, uh, it's black, but if I flip that up and lift it, I can lift that glass out of the camera and notice for a moment that where the lens piece is, that the piece of glass that was facing it is clear, it's transparent, and also notice that the underside again is transparent, but all of the other edges are painted black and are actually mirrored. They're, they're painted with a silver compound and then painted black to protect it. Um, I'll put that down for one moment just to show you the focusing screen. So there's the screen and it's on that focusing screen there that the uh, image would normally be focused. Um, and as I said, when the mirror flips out of the way, the image, the uh, light from the lens, rather than being sent up here to the focusing screen would be sent back onto the sensor or the film to record the image. So take that out of the way and there we have that is the Penta Prism. Um, it's a piece of fairly chunky glass. Um, it's, it's quite heavy, it's, uh, it's quite substantial, it's optical glass, it's extremely clear um, and probably very expensive to make. So the reason why you tend to get them on uh, higher end cameras is they're actually probably a fairly expensive piece of kit to make. So I'll put that down there while we now get the Penta mirror. So same thing, I've pre-dismantled this camera. Um, you've got the same electronics or similar electronics at the top here. And if I reveal the Penta mirror and pull it out, it's the same, exactly the same orientation. You've got the viewfinder here, the light does its 
thing to flip the image up the right way um, until it exits or it enters the camera through the lens and exits through uh, the eyepiece. Um, now, if I just put them side by side, other than the fact that this one actually has the lens piece built into, the eyepiece built into this, um, they're actually very, very similar. They're similar in shape, they're similar in size. Um, this one happens to have, because of its design, the focusing screen is built into the piece. But the first difference that I can see is of the weight. They're incredibly different in terms of weight. Um, that one is incredibly light, that one is very, very heavy. And if I just grab some scales, I should actually be able to weigh them for you. I don't know where you can see that. I'll just turn that on. Can't really see that very well. I haven't focused very well, but anyway. Um, I'll put the pentaprism on first. The pentaprism weighs uh, one and a half ounces. Okay, pentaprism one and a half ounces. Penta mirror is oh, just half an ounce. So that's, you know, it's, the pentaprism is three times the weight. Um, advantages and disadvantages, well I discussed those in the article so carry on reading um, but you can see by the physical makeup of that there's no way at all dust can get inside that pentaprism because it's made of a solid chunk of glass whereas with this, I guess it's possible, I mean the design is such that I, I'm sure it's unlikely but uh, I mean if I just slide this little clip and different pentaprisms, different pentamirrors um, are going to be designed in different ways. But if I just slide that pin out, it's actually possible to take the focusing screen off. And now you can see that there's all this, these mirrors inside. And if I just grab a screwdriver, it's possible for me to actually put the screwdriver inside the um, penta mirror there. And so one of the things about penta mirror, mirrors, what you often hear, is that dust can enter the penta mirror and cause you problems. Um, but for a discussion on that and to see whether that's a genuine uh, concern or not, then just carry on reading the article on the Photography Insider blog. Hope that's been helpful to you. Carry on reading and pop back. There's some more interesting articles here um, and I'm writing more all the time. If you contact me via the Contact Us page of the blog, then uh, and tell me what sort of things you're interested in. I can produce articles on those. So for the moment, if you'd like to scroll down the page and read the rest of the article. This is James from the Photography Insider Info blog.